Looks like it's talking about Reinhardt. It's always fun. That way. Welcome to Overwatch. Welcome to another episode of Coaching the Many. Today, we're going to be talking all about, yeah, Ryan and his upcoming place in the meta, hopefully a little bit as well. It's going to be interesting. I'm really curious to see where the next patch goes. Current patch, you can absolutely play him. Like, I want to kind of get ahead of myself as well a little bit, because I talk about the meta a lot in Coaching the Many. It's an important thing to understand and to, like, respect. But if the enemy team isn't playing the meta, you don't have to either. Or if they don't understand the meta, or if they don't know why the meta is strong, they don't know what makes the meta so good, you can absolutely get away with playing Ryan Zarya. It is perfectly fine. Ryan Zarya is like, I'd say, at about 80% strength, while Sigma Arisa is at 100% strength. And you need to know what you're doing with Sig Arisa, so Ryan Zarya can sort of get away with a lot. Uh, otherwise, yeah, Reinhardt Hanamura. It's sort of a short game, but... We'll see. Also, happy pants. I'm pretty sure these pants names only happen when you get like a forced um, name change. I'm pretty sure that's the case. So someone's been naughty. I am a oh, oh, retired Ryan Me main. There you go. Struggling with the spelling here. Oh lord. My tank SR is still higher than, I'm just guessing my other SRs, okay, yeah, there we are, uh, so, first things first, first thing we always do during these coaching sessions, first things we always take a look at is what is our team comp, especially just as the gates open, it's always a good idea to know what you're playing with, and our team comp is a bit interesting, so here's the thing, if you in, end up in the situation with like a main tank, with double main tank, one of you is going to have to change towards like a more off tanky play style. What this will generally mean is the Arisa will dump her barrier here, and you can just swing while the, the barrier is up, and you can just sort of be a roadblock in this choke point, right? You, this is sort of how I would play Reinhardt if I was with an Arisa, is I would just say, hey Arisa, yeah, try and shove your barrier in this choke point as much as possible, and I'm just going to stand it, okay, maybe not that far forward, but I'm just going to stand in this area and just deny this space with my body. And then when the barrier dies, I can bring mine up, hold it for a few seconds, bring it down, Arisa's barrier is planted, I go back to swinging. And that's literally all I'm going to be looking to do. Uh, that's That's... Yeah, going to make me happy as anything. The danger of this team comp is if stuff starts coming in over the, the high ground, because we can't really respond to that super well. We don't deal with that very well. Uh, we got the sim. So we have a little bit of extra mobility. We have like a lot of high damage, close range. And then we got the ash, which is like a medium range, medium to long range. Well, I'm just going to say medium range. I don't really like ash at long range. Uh, medium range damage hero. So a lot of decent AoE for the choke. Good choke control. Just a little bit worried about, you know, any threats coming up and over. Healing-wise, Moira sort of covers all your healing needs. And then you've got the Mercy for a little bit of extra support. So, yeah, play close to the choke. Seems about right. Shift is the aggro button. Yeah, shift, shift is a button that I want to see, like, not be pressed at all. Almost. Hello. And then we'll talk about what their team comp is when we see it. So, Flash Andy, apparently. See, this is totally unnecessary. Like, I want to really highlight this, because this is this is so important to understanding. You're protecting a barrier that's already off cooldown. Uh, I talked about this in the past, but this is so important to reiterate on. It's very, very important to understand the, the starting phase of an Arisa. Arisa will plant a barrier. Let's actually even see when the barrier was planted. Or three, two, one... So this Arisa is actually planting a barrier late, which is a little bit of a problem. Like, it needs to already be out. But there it is. Uh, so, 53. You might need to protect this one a little bit, but if you give her, like, the time she needs, it'll be off cooldown. And you're protecting a barrier that literally can be instantly replaced. So all you're doing is wasting shield there. There's, there's literally no need. Alright, her barrier is already off cooldown. So we're, we're actually doing nothing by doing this. You could be fire striking, uh, but actually very good fire striking. The thing I'll say as well on Hanamura, you generally want to wait a little bit. Like we can actually see, like this is part of why replays are so useful. You can actually see where they are during this, and we can actually work out. Hang on, they're still miles away. Like the only person who'd be hit by that is like a tracer, and that tracer would have to be particularly foolish if she's going to try and do that. So yeah. 47, someone's come around the corner. 
We can even like note that timing down in our head if we want. But yeah, I would 100% be looking for a fire strike here. Like, you want to have ult charge. You should be getting a lot of ults during this. Because we don't need to use our barrier for this. Now we want to have a full barrier. Right? Now you need that full barrier. But we don't have it. Okay, it's fine. Get in there! Get stuck in there! Your power is your ability to get stuck in. See, they have a Zarya. She's doing a lot of damage. That's a very fast coalescence. Good. Don't have to push, just take it steady. Okay. Bury it down! Put your barrier down! So yeah, this is why, like... This is why I emphasize it so much on, like, look at your team comp at the start of every game. Because if you don't and you don't think about it, it you start ending up with mistakes like this one. Where it's just like... We haven't realized what our role is in the team, so we're still playing it like a main tank, but I, I hate to say it, Reinhardt, Orisa has a bigger dick than you do. She is the main tank here. She is the one in control of the pace of the game. Um, we don't need to be doing this, this tank stuff. Once Orisa's barrier is down, you can drop your barrier, and unless they're flanking you, you don't have to worry about it. You absolutely don't have to worry about it. Like, this, this is more what you're looking to do. Also, I wanted to do... Charge... The Hulk, but failed. Okay. No! <laughs> no! So, here's the advantage of pressing Shift as well, right? Well into the game, we can press Shift and see what they have. They have a McCree. Uh, if they have a McCree, they can control your charges. 100%. I don't know where he is. I don't know when he last died. I haven't been paying attention to that. I think that's him here. So first, yeah, you're way too late. Like, you need to be starting the charge. Once this green line connects, that's when the charge needs to be going out. Otherwise, this happens. Even then, I'd say that this isn't worth it. Like, just fire strike these don't go in like this, because if they actually went aggro on this, and I really don't like this move, on like going in on the Zarya, this Zarya is a lot more dangerous than you are. Right, you can see that she's lit up like the goddamn sun, the Moira could easily just come in behind and just throw some healing on her as well, and you can't do a damn thing about it, and the Moira can do that safely, because there's a good chance that she has fade still. So if she just follows in behind you and you turn around to hit her, she just fades and she's gone, the Zarya kills you. Um... If you don't turn around and hit her, she just heals the, the Zarya, the Zarya kills you. There's a lot of ways that this goes very, 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 very badly wrong. And the, the big thing to realize here, especially as like a tank player in general, is it's very important when you're playing with like Ana Baptiste especially. Less important if you're playing with like Zen. Uh, but definitely with like Ana Baptiste. And I would say with Moira Mercy, the logic still does kind of apply, where the moment you leave line of sight, you're in trouble. And you can maybe with these healers get away with like going around this corner a little bit and poking a little bit, but you start like en entering like these areas and you're going to be way too far away for the, the supports to help you. You're just going to die. Like, and then you're going to go, oh my god, what the fuck, my healers aren't doing it. And then, yeah, you just look really stupid. Uh, and if you die over here, Mercy can't res you. If you die here, Mercy can absolutely just stand here and pick you up. Um, dying here is actually not a problem. Like, dying by these walls, very, very nice, very tasty. Huge value reses for Mercy. Dying out here, no, no good. And if you end up going through here and, like, into these rooms, yeah, no one can help you. Literally no one can help you. So you should have just barrier up, back out, and get back to your team. I don't like the, the chasing this down. This is not a fight you win. She deals way more damage than you do. She will cut you down like the dog you are. And I need healing! Yeah, your supports currently are going, you, you've got nothing, and yeah, you die. That's, that's all on you. You die in a place where Mercy pays for it with her life. You better make this up to her. Not bad. Turn. You could have just... Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I would have been fine just turning... Like, I'm panicking in this situation. Because you've died, Mercy's died, they're pushing hard. They're in, Sims died. 
Like, I have no idea what's happening in this battle. I would honestly just turn and shatter this guy from behind. I don't think this Reinhardt is expecting you to just appear. I would have probably thrown the shatter out myself at this moment. Um, just to, like, very quickly deal with these threats. Like, that's what's the, the forefront of my mind right now. Is like, we need to equalize this fight very, 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 very quickly. Barrier up. Watch the corpse. Good. Just try and make sure Mercy can't res that. Sounds like she tried to res something else. Farah's feeding. Mercy's now feeding. Well, Farah has doomed Mercy. This plays in your team's favor massively. Okay, we got through it. Whoo. Eleven minutes in and the deck mentioned. Yeah. It's important to keep these terms in your mind. Risa is literally a horse. I feel she has an advantage. Okay, yeah. Just... So, again, like, I do want to emphasize this. Like, why are we the barrier here? Where's Arisa's barrier? Like, that's my question. What What's this Arisa doing? Yep. Honestly, yeah. Like, this shouldn't work as well as it does, but it does work, and it keeps the enemy honest. Right? And what do I mean by keeps them honest? What this Reinhardt wants to do, that we're looking at, the enemy Reinhardt that we're staring into the face of, he wants to come in and swing into the Shatter. That's 100% what he wants to do, because it's a lot of damage, gives him like an instantaneous ultimate. He wants to do that. But he can't do that if you have an Earth Shatter yourself, and you are just looking at him going, go on, try it, son. Because the moment he does... And he literally, like, drops his barrier at the perfect goddamn moment. He gets obliterated. And you kill all momentum on this Graviton Surge. Actually, no. He... What? He decided to go for a charge. A charge? He went for a charge. Decided to go for a charge there. Don't know what that accent was. How does Ryan not get shattered? I think... So, Earth Shatter actually works on, like, a wave. It, like, projects outwards. And I think he blocked it, but then because he dropped his barrier, I don't know, actually. Because the thing is, I always consider it like a zone. Like, if you enter this space, it, like, does go outwards with time. It takes, like, a second or something to get to, like, its full range. Maybe less. Maybe, like, half a second. Um, which is usually, like, if the Reinhardt blocks it and then drops his shield, even, like, right after the, the animation lands, after this bit hits you can still get hit by it, so I'm really weirded out by the fact that he's not hit by that. It still doesn't matter, it still worked. Like, he fucked up. And he can't get away with doing stuff like this as long as you do that every time. And you could probably just do that every time. Hold it for a second, and then chatter. That was kind of lucky, that was the correct thing to do. Because if they don't do it, then you, like... You just, you put your shatter into theirs, and then you just start swinging, and you'll get another one very quickly. Or you just barrier up and then maybe take a swing or two. Just cancel the swing, like, just hit, cancel, hit, cancel. Just get a little bit of damage back out, um, and you'll be fine. And, yeah, it, you've slowed down their push. Like, the Reinhardt has had to keep his barrier up. So, uh, it's honestly fine. Don't worry about that. Zarya blocked it? I don't think she did... Uh. She's down on personal. No. There's no bubble there. If she did, it was a goddamn miracle. Okay. So yeah, just build up another shadow. Like, again, we don't need to have a barrier up all the time. Like, if you really want to get nitpicky, you can probably have it up and block like 500 damage. And then let the Arisa barrier tank it, and then sort of rotate like that. So your barrier's recharging while hers is taking damage, and then by the time it's down, you should have 2,000 barrier again, or next patch, 1,600. Um, but yeah, don't don't get like too caught up in this. Don't think that you have to like be the tank here, because the Arisa has disposable barriers. She might as well be firing them off cooldown. To run go back to Contest Tracer? In this case, yes, because he's playing the off tank. They have a Bastion. 
So yeah, now we need to play clever. We need to be smarter. So yeah, play around the corner. Good block. Good catch as well. I didn't even see that. I'm hoping you saw you saw the charge. You might have heard it. Very good catch. I'm hoping that was a catch and not just a, I want to charge their team. Because if you wanted to charge their team, you're going to die because they have a May. It doesn't work. Very good catch if that was an intentional catch. Play the sight line. Excellent. Excellent. This is 100% correct. I mean, I talked about this a lot in Coaching the Many, which is like how walls are just incredible in Overwatch. And yeah, this is like almost 100% correct. I think we're going a little bit too far, but completely the right idea. What we should also be doing, and by the way, this is like a whole other aspect to playing Reinhardt that's ridiculously important, but it's about now definitely that we've learned more than enough about our enemy Reinhardt. He likes to charge. He loves to charge. He adores charging at people. So, like, it's almost like a fighting game with Reinhardt. Like, it's 90% mind games. It's figuring out what does he want to do. And we know that he's very aggressive. He's thrown shadows straight at us. He's charged very aggressively. Um, we can kind of get a good read on him. And, you know, figure it out. At this point, I didn't want to come to the point. Because I thought it was lost. Okay, here's the thing. I'm sure you may be laboriously typing out towards this point. If you are in a position, like, if you can get to the point and you're, like, halfway there and it's still being contested, 100% go and die on the point. Because a little while ago they changed it so that if you die while the point's being captured, or, like, just before the point gets captured, or when the point gets captured, or something like that, like, when the point gets captured and it's, like, five seconds after it or something, your respawn time, like, drops to, like, three seconds right? The big thing is you want to die around when the point gets captured, because then you'll pretty much instantaneously respawn, and you'll be ready to defend a second. You might be a little bit out of position, but it's not like you're coming back and they're coming through the door, right? You'll be out, and you'll be ready somewhere, and then they'll arrive. You'll always beat them back to it. The worst thing to do is to, like, get halfway and go, no, I'm not going to contest it, and then start walking back, and then the you know, some of them, like, run ahead, and then they catch you, and then you die, and then they're already on the point, and you're dead. Because that doesn't work in your favor, in the slightest. Um, I'm sure someone could figure out the exact details of that patch note, but the gist of it is basically die on point. Uh, if you don't die on point, then just already be, then just wait on second. But, yeah, if you are like, oh, I'm halfway to contesting it, and this is why I bring it up, because I saw the Reinhardt over here, and you can see you running over, then, yeah, you might as well just go all the way. Like, yeah, once you start getting to, like, this point, just go. And honestly, this actually worked out in you guys' favor. Um, you got the blizzard out of them. Yeah, this is not a good idea. Because if they flip the point and you die, you're not going to get the fast spawn. You got the earth shadow out of them. This is actually very good for your team. It's actually excellent for your team. But this is the exact thing I'm talking about. Like, if they cap this and you're, like, still pissing around over here. I want to see if we actually get the fast spawn. Like, this is the worst possible scenario. Yeah, this is the worst possible scenario. Oh, no, we do get the fast spawn. So it does work out. Imagine we were very close with the timer. It's still not ideal because, look, they're already here. Very aggressive with this charge. You don't like this charge in the slightest. Nice. What? 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 Okay, we're watching this from his perspective again. Yeah, just get in there. Here's the thing, like, you've got to realize, and this is, I think, is what a lot of people miss, which is very important during stuff like this, is like, you've got to realize that you're winning in a way. And it sounds like a really strange thing to say because it's like, well, we lost the point, but it doesn't matter. The thing is, if they took this point and no one contested it, they would come into the second point with Blizzard and a Shatter that they'll have. Uh, and 
potentially any other shit that they use. The fact that you're like draining resources out of them means that their snowball risk is so much lower. If they went to second and they had Blizzard, you guys are in so much trouble. Blizzard is so good for taking points. So yeah, getting those resources out is such an important deal. And yeah, this this is where I think you just die on point. Like, even now, you can probably get away with just dying on point. And you'll be back in time. And in a better place, with a full shield. And I know you're thinking like, Oh, I must protect Moira. No, Moira's fine. If anyone's fine, it's Moira. You burn time and resource? I mean, in this specific case, it's an overtime, so the time factor doesn't come into it. If there is still time left on the clock, then yeah, absolutely. Like, dying on the point. Actually, yeah, let's talk about this, because I'm, I'm not going into, like, general t detail too much, right? But this is a very, very important thing, especially on, like, payload maps. Um, when you're not in overtime, or when they're trying to push the payload, like, what it is doing is it stalls the movement and stops the fucking movement, causes the timers to tick down, and yeah, it's just getting you more seconds. It's getting you more time. It's getting people time to respawn and set up as well. It's getting people time to like properly set up ahead. And then it's giving yourself time as well. Because all this interim time... Hey! Overwatch Scrub Club. Am I part of the Overwatch Scrub Club? I certainly hope so. Sounds accurate. Uh, right. Because all this time, like, you aren't doing anything. All you're doing here is giving them ult charge that you would have given them anyway. And losing barrier. Reaper even gets rest on the point, yeah. That fight was kind of winnable. This charge I want to talk about, I don't like the fact that we go so deep. Um, I think, like, because we have shadow, all I'm thinking about at this stage is, can I shadow someone to get a fast kill? Um, and I'll probably, like, as we come out here, I'll be like, oh, the Zarya's on the point. Great. She's used her personal bubble, even greater. And just gone and stopped here, and then just turned to, like, shadow the Zarya. I don't know why we go this deep. And even here, I probably would have just turned and tried to shadow the Mercy, to be honest. I would probably just fired it back. Because all I'm thinking at this stage is like, shadow, 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 shadow. Because their Ryan isn't here, the Zarya's got no personal. Like, even, I probably still have tried to shadow that, to be honest. Yeah, we do get it eventually. And there's no need to go that far ahead. And I understand that, like, this is chaos, and this is like, oh my god, I have to do things, ah, I've got to make the big plays. This is great for your team, this is just wasting time. Building you up another shadow, notice that we're on 50%. I don't like what we did there, okay, something strange. So we got a Sigma now, instead of the Orisa. Which, you know, can work with us. Now we are the main tank, now we have the biggest dick in the room. Oh, uh, which is great. The one thing I'll comment on here is, like... You're kind of fine swinging here, but once you see this Bastion, I think the the appropriate response is 100% what you just did. Get your barrier up, get in front of the, the Bastion. Because the only thing that can turn this fight, like, you guys are 100% winning this fight, unless this Bastion goes completely uncontested and just shoots at everyone. Right? If you can just go completely uncontested and kill everyone, yeah, that's a problem. But if you just stick a big old 2,000 hit point barrier in front of him, yeah, it only lasts for a couple of seconds, but it gives people time to go, oh shit, there's a Bastion. I need to move out of line of sight and get behind these things. Reaper's gone underneath and can, like, start flanking and do cool things. Like, people have options. So I actually don't like the fact that we, like, walk to the side and just let him start firing at point. When, yeah, we could just block and just let everyone react. It's... I talk about this a lot. Uh, and I, I think it's, like, a very, very important concept, which is the idea of slowing down the fight at times. When you are winning, you want to slow down the fight because the... The more chaotic the fight is, the more, like, super rapid, um, like, high-octane fighting you do. With current meta, kills come in, like, extremely quickly or extremely slowly. When I say extremely quickly, I mean, like, one shot, you aren't gonna stop them. But, like, Mei doesn't kill people quickly, right? The, the team cop we're fighting against, the Bastion is the only thing that kills people quickly. Your team doesn't... Well, kind of does kill people fairly fast, but they need to get in position, they need to get closer. They, Junkrat needs a couple of shots, for example. But you have all the advantages, because you're like 6 versus 4. So if you just deny their ability to do damage, and then your team just slowly whittles them down, you win. 
right? It's like, you've already won, they need to do something special. So let's just slow it down and say, yeah, try it. Like, what do you got? Because if they try something, chances are you still win. You still have advantage. Also, I don't, don't charge Bastions. It doesn't end well. So, minor mistake here. I don't know why you stepped back. I don't, I don't know why we stepped back. Body blocking is very much a real thing in Overwatch. It's a very important thing to understand, especially as a tank player. If you just park your gigantic metal frame here, I don't think she can even squeeze past you this way. I think if you just, like, if you run forward, and you can even see, like, she telegraphs like crazy, because she's just running to where she wants to go. She's, like, looking this way. Like, you just stop moving here. Or just hold forward. You just body block. And well, the funny part is, you don't even need to hold left click. You can just body block, body block, body block, body block, and then Reaper will kill her, and then their team is scuppered. So I don't know why we step back. Don't step back! You don't get points for being a gentleman in Overwatch. I'm gonna go milady after you, madam. And you do a big... Bow. Oh, my precious lady. You must go first. I'll lay down my coat so you, you may fly away. Oh, delicate flower. No, you bash her face in with a giant hammer and block her path. Yeah, just block that. That was... What? Don't... So, again, remember, like, reading the Reinhardt. What I will say with this, like, this Reinhardt is just wait for him to make mistakes. 100%. This is all my fighting game experience, like, coming to life now. Where it's like, this guy likes to do really stupid things. And if you're fighting anyone in a fighting game or in Overwatch, in a MOBA, and they like to do big stupid things, you let them do the big stupid thing, you play safely, and then you punish the ever-loving shit out of them. Right, this guy is Brazilian Ken... On the floor, he's got a full EX meter. You know he's going to go for the Shoryuken on Wake Up. You know he's going to do it. So you just stand over him, and then as he's waking up, you hold block, he does it, and you blow him the fuck up. Exactly the same principle. You just stand here with your barrier. He's got to cross this ground. He could just walk forwards with his barrier. Well, he could just wait for his team to be behind him, maybe back up a little bit, let his barrier regenerate, then walk forwards and go this way. Maybe he goes high ground. You're on low ground. He can rotate high ground. He's got to force your entire team to move through. Okay. But no. No, 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 no. Not this guy. He's going to get a bubble on him and then charge you across the bridge, away from his team, away from his support, which is Mercy Moira. Uh, so the Mercy's never going to be able to reach him. And you're just going to catch him. Sigma protects you. Sigma does a freaking incredible job. And then he just explodes. If the enemy is doing something stupid, don't stop them. Yep. You, you seem confused. Okay. So this is why it's very important to keep track of your team and like kind of set up a hierarchy. Like if I had to very quickly set up a hierarchy of main tanks, MTs, in my head, I would say Arisa is the biggest main tank at the moment. Um, she's like the biggest, most important. Her barrier should basically be pointing at where the majority of enemies are. Ryan is second. Uh, and then... Yeah, I'd still say like Winston is third. Sig. Hammond. Right. And I, I'll put it in this order. And when I say main tank, like what we're thinking about when we're main tanking is my barrier has to be between my team and their biggest sources of damage. And so I'm guessing that just means, well, actually most of their team is dead. So this still okay. I'm still going to apply this logic, assuming that the Reaper didn't like get into the back line and kill everyone, apparently. Uh, it's just block this shit, right? And not do this fancy stuff where you run over Zarya's face and then turn your ass to her. Like, oh, hi, have a graviton surge, love. Oh, here's my big booty. Woo. You don't need to deal with this. This is Sigma's job. Sigma can, like, just throw a barrier over there and forget about it. What is this charge? No, 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 no. Okay. 
no reason to do this. I don't know what's happening in voice comms, unless the voice comms are like very specific, it's just those two. This is insane. There's no need. I'm glad that we hit this thing at least, so that we can still get back out, but again, you're just, you, like, as Reinhardt, what is your plan here? Even if you hit this charge, I don't think you kill them. I don't think you kill them if you hit this charge. I think the Mercy just heals the Zarya, and the Zarya just gets a Graviton Surge and kills you, maybe. And they just run away. There we go. What rank is this? We don't know. It's gonna be part- you guys have to figure it out. I have to figure it out as well. Okay. Yep. And here he comes again! And... Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! So this is why it's so important to do these mind games. And like, to try and read the enemy Reinhardt and try and study him and what he's doing. And I know this is a lot going on. But the first time we did this, it worked a goddamn charm. Second time, if you did exactly the same thing you did before, it would work. Because watch, he has his barrier up for like a second and then he drops it and starts swinging. Exactly what I said, first half. He wants to swing into the Graviton. And notice he's dropped his shield, and now he's running in and swinging. He's even jumped and swinging. I would just slam that hammer down so hard, it would smash the bridge. Because you can see their entire team wants to push through this. Hammer down. 100% hammer down here. Just give it a second, give him a second to make the mistake and make him think, uh, Oh, I can just run in. And especially once you see him committing to these swings, yeah, just bring it. I can't see shit, how can you tell what's going on at all? Experience. Um... <laughs> and I'm very specifically watching for the barrier. You can kind of see it there. You can see the enemy barrier. It's got that white outline. It's also, it is easier to see in game. Like, the YouTube has a lower bit rate. Uh, I don't know what this is recorded at. It actually seems pretty good, so I'm guessing this is about 1200. Or 12,000, rather. You can see barrier, 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 barrier. The big thing is this moment. Where you can see the Reinhardt start running forward. And the big tell is there, where he jumped. And you can see him right there. And especially if he goes behind you like this. Like, don't fucking block him. You can't block him. Just uh, shatter his team. If he wants to run behind you, yeah. Make your life easy, why don't he? Well, he shattered his corpse. He probably has a shatter. Nope. Every time. Without fail. Good. This is actually really good. I really like this. Just playing defensively until you don't need to anymore. Good. Block, 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 block. Nice. Why did you try and block Ryan instead of Zarya? Target fixation. When Grove happened, I mainly tried to block the Reinhardt. Yeah, but it never came. Uh, let's talk about your ultimate tracking. <laughs> actually, I don't blame you for missing this, because I missed it as well. Yeah, I completely missed that. You actually, the, the Sigma actually completely cocked him. I don't know what this Reinhardt is doing. You heard, like, you heard the voice line for like a split second. You can actually see it. Like, this is why I need to turn these subtitles on when I play. I actually see it. That's why these subtitles are overpowered, by the way. So we actually did see it. Uh, I can appreciate that, but the thing is, if you are going to shatter into a um, into a graph, you don't run round. There's absolutely no need to to run around like this. And honestly, yeah, I think you're just better going on the offense against this guy. Like, I appreciate keeping the barrier, and I 100% agree with keeping the barrier up for like a second. Just hold it up for a second, block some early damage, get stock, like, take stock of the situation, and figure out what your next move is going to be, and just realize that, well, this worked before, it's probably going to work again. And you just keep doing it until he stops, like, until he figures out that you can just do that. 
Not a big fan of that shadow. <laughs> not gonna lie. Don't be afraid, especially when you've got like a decent amount of barrier like we have here, we've got a thousand hit points. Like, you can just take a moment and figure out what's going on. Don't be afraid to take a second and do it. Good catch. Yeah, this guy is just an idiot. Like, you can 100% run rings around him. Very, very good info as well for the offense. Um, chances are he's going to try charging you at some point and you're just going to kill him. Yeah, this is all good for you, by the way. These guys should be, like, trying to die as fast as possible, but they're trying to run away. Yep, body blocker. Just keep swinging. Good. Sig Sigma? Oh, yeah, last second. Okay. So I really don't know what I should have done in my perspective. When was that message put in? Oh, oh, right, yeah. That was back when we were contesting the point. Okay, give me the next half. So as we run out the door, what's our team comp? Uh, oh, we're teleporting to the point, seems. We have a proper tank lineup, so yeah, we are again the main tank. Teleporting to point. So your big goal here is to... Well, they have a bastion. This is actually good for you. This is very, uh, kind of good for you. Actually, no need to rush. Brilliant barrier by the BAP. They really fucked that up. I wished... I thought the Reaper would, ro would focus Bastion. No, he can't. So let's, let's talk about this entire section. Okay, first things first, you've got to realize if they're playing this close, it's actually pretty good for you. Um, mainly because the distance you have to cover is this far. <laughs> uh, congratulations, you are on top of the enemy bastion. Welcome to Overwatch. This is very, very nice for us. Hey, thank you, Coop. Owned. It's a good button. It's a very, very good button. Uh, so yeah, if they're playing bastion like this, don't be afraid to like just run up to this wall and just you can even use voice comms and just say to your team hey guys i need to regenerate my barrier so you get everyone across to this wall and then you regenerate your barrier and then you have 2000 barrier you've got immortality field you've got moira's healing you've got a sim who can go anywhere you've got reaper sim at close range sim can just stand here and left click and get full charge and then you just run in and kill everyone you got four minutes there is no rush, literally no rush. If you're feeling really fancy, what you can do is you can dance out, take a little bit of damage, dance back, just make sure you don't go too far, like don't actually go that far, just like literally poke your shoulder out, take some damage on the shoulder, come back in, Moira heals you, uh, poke out, Moira heals you, poke out, Moira heals you. Just make sure that you coordinate that with the Moira and the Baptiste, and then you can get all your ults super quickly, and then just run in and laugh. And laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. But yeah, this is really bad positioning. The issue that people have with this sort of thing is they panic. They absolutely panic. And they, they go mental trying to like brute force it super quickly. But you ha like you are completely 100% safe from the their comp by standing here. <laughs> right? And when you break it down like this, when you break it down as, oh, the distance I have to cover is literally this far. That's... That's very manageable. That's very, very good. The other thing to realize is that Baptiste actually does you a huge favor. And gets a, a really pretty nice immortality field, actually. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. So yeah, you can absolutely like play around this corner with that immortality field up. And you can just take a couple of swings, you can fire fire strikes. It's all good. So you mentioned that oh, I wish the Reaper one like would go focus the, the Bastion. He can't. Notice that this is a lot scarier as a position. They actually end up in a much better position, but they do it in like such a fragmented way. So, yeah, this is actually pretty scary. Because now, we have to cover like all of this ground into a Bastion, who's probably being damage amped. That's, that's pretty scary. Honestly, what you could do is just get your team in here, 
kill the ash and then you can just like rotate around um the, normally like when you see pros play this sort of style when they start playing like bastion bunker comps on hanamora they will literally like start out and you know maybe they'll start here and then they'll rotate and go up here and the enemy team will like go through and go up and like push from this way they always want to make sure that they create a big distance between them and the enemy or well, they'll start up here and shoot down which is like a much stronger position to play from because you can't just like sprint up here you can't just run up here you have to go like all the way around the side and that's not good you have to go all the way up here and then go to the point that's not good they can play from here and then when their team goes through here they'll either go around the back and get to the point or they'll just drop down and then go this way and get to the point and set up up here um no one plays from here this this is suicide this is stupid And at this point, you've you've kind of done like a really good job already of just getting your foot in the door. Like you can just kill the ash. There's no need to rush here. You got the diva mac as well, which is actually huge. Reapers in, yeah. Reaper Moira can clean this up. Like here's the thing, and like this is what the big takeaway from this fight that I, I want more people to appreciate, which is when they when people play against Bastion comps, everybody tunnel visions the Bastion like freaking crazy. Like everyone, like oh, we must focus the Bastion. Their entire gameplay strategy relies on the fact that you tunnel vision the Bastion like crazy, and then they maybe they have immortality field and they res him. Maybe they have the Duresa Barrier and they res him. And so you spend all your resources, all your time tunneling into the Bastion, and then he just gets resed. But if you just deconstruct them bit by bit, well, you killed the Ash, so that goes a source of damage. You killed the Diva Mech, that goes a source of protection. You've got the Immortality Field, okay. You kill one or two people elsewhere, and the Mercy might have to res those, or they're just behind. You build some ults. Like, you don't actually have to tunnel the Bastion. And yeah, with the Reaper drop down, you kind of expect him to go for it, but honestly, if he can get in and just start causing hell, it's fine. It doesn't actually matter. Like, he's killed the Orisa, which is honestly enough of a win, as long as they can't res it. Due to spawn distances, you win at that point. Uh, do, 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 I thought... Wait, wait, wait. I would have charged him. Uh, charges on cooldown. <laughs> and I, I still hold... You can... The issue with charging Bastions... So you can't charge this Bastion. Watch it. We're nearly on full health. We are on full health. Full health, full health. You try and start a charge here. In the time it takes you to go... You will die. You're dead. You don't actually get the charge. Uh, the, the way you fight Bastion is you don't. <laughs> the way you fight Bastion is you put your barrier up, you hit him, barrier, hit him, barrier, hit him, barrier. And that will also enable other people behind you to hit him. I don't think he actually hits the charge if he goes for it. The only time you can charge your Bastion is if you have something else covering for you. Otherwise it just doesn't ever work, you just die. Take the tally! Woo! Oh, hello! This this is really good. Don't kill the baby. 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 She's back. That diva gave you such a gift because everybody else, everybody else on their team, if you kill them, they will respawn. Watch the spawns. Right? You kill her. She's back. But this is where you shout a chat like, don't kill her, don't kill her, don't kill her, because she, she ain't killing shit. Um, Moira Baptiste against Bunny Blaster? Are you kidding? She can't touch anyone. You stall her out for like five seconds and then kill her, or you just fucking ignore her and just run to the point. Like... You have such a huge advantage. It's below diamond. I would not put my money on that being a diamond thing. People love just smashing the enemy. It's fine. Uh, 
Notice this isn't the Reinhardt from before. Sim is doing that work. <laughs> this this isn't the right heart from before, but he plays just like him. Uh, okay, let's talk about this fight. Let's talk about the the problem we face. Your Symmetra like completely carried this fight. Baptiste did a good job. Sim got our turrets in a really nice place. The big thing that Sim did that we didn't in, like play off is this. When she gets this up, you can move in now. Because he's walled off most of the team. And I know we're worried about this Bastion, but we, like what you do is you keep your eyes on the Bastion. Once the Bastion goes through the field, then you put your barrier up, and then you just like sit on top of him. And just block for him. Because anyone standing behind this ain't doing shit to you. It does feel like the coordination was a bit lacking. Like, half the team had a plan, half the team didn't. Which is like, oh, we're going to take the teleporter to high ground. Like... Generally, I like it if the entire team moved that way, but hey. Sim did a really good job with that. Very nicely done, Symmetra. Sim teleporters are questionable? I wouldn't say so. Like, if everyone takes him, Baptiste is covering it as well. This is why I think it's a coordinated play. Like, we don't have the voice chat, so I can't tell you for sure. But the fact that, like, you cover it, the Baptiste covers it. If the Reinhardt goes through the telly, it's fine. Everyone can get through that. You can't teleport on first point as well because they were just holding so close that there's no good tally for her. And yeah, we can take more space. Like, the barrier enables us to take more space. A good catch on the charges. And yeah, we stomp them. 100%. Right, the biggest thing, and like the most important thing with this replay, 100% the most important thing with this replay is reading their Reinhardt. It's one of the most fun parts of Overwatch, in my opinion. Uh, when Overwatch turns into a fighting game. It's uh, actually two things. Two very important things. Yeah, let's focus on these two things. Reading our team and reading their Reinhardt. And we'll start with reading our team. And it's just a matter of like checking what your team comp is, where you're strong, where you're good at fighting, and who does what, and trying to like break it down in your head in the, the six conventional roles of Overwatch. All right, which is empty, main tank, off tank. And then you generally have, well, I would generally refer to as like main DPS, um, and then like people generally call it like flex DPS, but it's generally like support DPS, I guess. Um, and then you will have main heal. And off heal. Right? And so, th these roles are not that complicated. Main tanks, their job is to just block the bigger source of damage, it's to take ground, it's to like... It's to set the pace of the team somewhat as well. It's very much built around like, okay, I'm just going to point a big old barrier towards the big source of damage and block that off. Winston does it a little bit differently because he like puts his barrier on the enemy team basically uh, and blocks them off that way but it still functionally applies the same logic. Off tanks they are there to support the main tank um, with stuff like you know Zarya bubbles and things like that and to sort of really like shore up defenses at moments of high DPS but they're also there to deal with backline threats. They're also there to deal with things coming in on the back or coming in from off angles and they can really handle those threats a lot better. Stuff like Sigma is very good at that. You can put a barrier towards like a Widowmaker flanking, put a barrier up, Farah, put a barrier up, um, Gravitic Kinetic Grasp or whatever it is, Diva Defense Matrix, all that kind of good stuff, Projected Bubbles. Uh, Roadhog can just go and kill things that are flanking, he just wins 1v1s, so that makes him very strong at doing that. Uh, then main DPS, it's like, when I say main DPS and support DPS, I generally mean like, you generally want one DPS to focus on killing barriers and shit, and one DPS to focus on dealing with people who are away from the barriers, or dealing with people who are away from threats. In current meta, it's a little bit different. Um... Though the logic still kind of applies, but like Doomfist goes, looks for picks, looks for individual kills, and then the Reaper comes in and just does all the damage. For example, with like the conventional Doom Reaper comp. The Doomfist is kind of the support DPS in that he's looking for picks, he's looking for little things here and there, and then someone else comes in and does the big dick damage. Uh, in our team comp, Symmetra is actually your main DPS, Ash is your off DPS. She's there to like. Plink at Faras, um, Plink at Genji if he tries to like go over the flanks, for example. Plink at Hanzo, Widow, that kind of stuff. Whereas Sim should be focusing on the barriers and on the front line. Main heal, person healing your tanks. 
majority of like this person should have gold healing basically that's their job off heal is more about um providing heals to people who want to go and do flanks so like zen for example as an off healer your job is to see oh my genji wants to go into the back line i'll give him an orb and then he can go and get more value it's less about like providing healing and more about providing support and enabling um so it's it's very important to have these breakdowns in your head because then you can look at a team and go oh well in this team comp main tank off tank main heal off heal main dps off dps and you kind of know what you want to do and we can do it with this team main tank off tank obviously main dps off dps off heal main heal and these two should be playing together the pharmacy should be like going up and over and like trying to shoot around your back lines and messing with you that way the mccree should be behind the right uh yeah behind the reinhardt just trying to deal with the main tank trying to flash you for example trying to flash anyone poking the nose too close all that kind of stuff this is low mid gold so yeah what are people's uh sr guess so we've got 2.7 so that's not too unfair 2.2 2.5 i haven't given my guess yet under eight plat low mid gold uh, so i'm going to put you as 2.3 2.1 uh i think you guys are being harsh i i would probably actually linger more towards like the 2.7 i think the 2.7 is more correct 2.4 the reason why is i think a lower ranked tank would not be thinking about things like enemy uh, shadows would not be catching the enemy um, charges quite that much pushes tended to look fairly coordinated uh, people were playing towards a plan even though the plan wasn't being executed smoothly there was still like a plan in action 2.8 yeah so got a wide variety i'm gonna click here it's down here it's not top 500 i was placed at 2k really this is an impressive game for gold what the fuck Gold is normally like anarchy. This tilts me. This actually tilts me to know that this is gold. Like, I am actively annoyed because of the sheer clusterfucks of matches I had to play yesterday. I was playing in goddamn, like, low to mid masters. And the gains were just hell on earth. This looks better than the shit I was playing in. It's not ideal, like the strategy isn't quite there, but... <laughs> that res... That res should not... <sighs> Incredible. Incredible. 2k? No way. Just goes to show. Like, this, because here's what, like, gets me. I guess it kind of does, like, there are good examples of, like, stuff that does feel lower rank, but even then, like, I see people make this these kind of shitty errors at higher rank. Stuff like the, the Mercy, when we were Gentlemen for Mercy, which I think is, like, coming up here, yeah. Like, this, this sort of thing. Like, I, I've seen people in, like, Diamond and Masters make these sorts of mistakes. The only things that really... In the only things that look very like gold and silver to me is stuff like the the charge we do with the Zarya Mercy, right? Which I think is actually later than this. Yeah, this one. Like this shit needs to stop. And this is this is more about like experience and knowing. Let's say you do catch him, right? You're like a dog chasing a car. Even if you get the car, you've got no idea what to do with it. Uh, even if you get this area, all you'll be doing is swinging and the Mercy heals, and the Mercy will just keep distance. Like, there's no way, if the Mercy runs up to you, then sure, you might actually be able to win this, but realistically speaking, she will just keep running away and just keep healing the Zarya, and you just lose this. You don't actually get this. But yeah, this happens at high SR as well. Like, people don't know the 1v1s, or people, like, go, oh my god, push, 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 and they want to get these kills for some reason, and it's like, no, you don't need to. And no one else follows. And then they go, Oh my god, you! what the fuck? No one followed me in. Blah, blah, blah. Not my mistake. Or if you're like me and you're a complete idiot, you'll follow this guy in and you'll both die and thus throw the game. Because, yeah. I've seen Mercy get stupid reds off at much higher ranks. Yep. 
Yep. I've been in many games. Like, this sort of stuff, that, that smacks of lower rank to me, but again, I've seen a lot of bad Reinhardts. The art of Rhine has sort of died. I think, again, if you play like you are, and you do this sort of thing with their Reinhardts, like, you just let their Reinhardts fuck up, you seem very, very good at punishing mistakes. And, like, catching these charges and that kind of stuff. Like, that's very, very important at these low ranks. Because I guarantee you, like, the hallmarks of a bad Reinhardt, and I think this is the point we'll end on, even though it's, like, pretty early, but hey. Hallmarks of bad Rhin, right? I'll tell you what we'll even do as I mess up writing and... and uh, Give me, give me this, yep. Perfect. Okay. Mute it. Bring it over. Bring this over. While I, while I talk, let's have something interesting. Playback speed, half. Perfect. Okay. The hallmarks of a bad Reinhardt player. What makes a bad Reinhardt a bad Reinhardt? And the, the dark and horrific truth is pressing too many buttons. Uh, in general, what good Reinhardt should be doing is largely this you can even improve this by flicking the barrier dropping it bring it up drop it bring it up drop it bring it up drop it bring it up what you're looking to do is mitigate as much damage as possible stop any lethal damage coming through so you can actually afford and it's honestly better for your team if you let little bits of damage come through because it charges your supports up um but if they have like hanzos and stuff then you've got to be much more careful when you start pressing too many buttons it just gives the enemy team opportunities to kill you. There was a good example last night um, when I was playing Hanamura and I was getting tilted on Hanamura because I was healing from the normal corner that you kind of heal from. And I was sort of poking around, heal, hide back. And the Reinhardt dropped his barrier for some reason. There was just a Torb shooting at that corner, which you know I should have realized and I should have played differently as a result of that as well. But he got a headshot on me and killed me on my Moira. And I died. And that gave the enemy team a huge opening. And it's like, you've got to just be very, very careful about any opportunities for the enemy team to get damage through and just cutting off those avenues, cutting off those options. Other hallmarks of a bad Reinhardt is, yeah, like charging to try and uh, close the gap. It's so telegraphed. Like, charge is intentionally one of the most telegraphed moves in the game. There are so many counters to it. There are so many ways to block it. You only get to charge if you, like, 100%, and I've talked about this so many times in the past, <clears throat> the the key to a good charge is first most importantly in my mind know where it will end right you've got to know where you're gonna um where you're gonna go because if you know that okay well i'm gonna charge but i'm not gonna charge like all the way into the enemy team that's fine if you charge deep into the enemy team and you get blocked thank you orisa for or bot for demonstrating for us this is literally what happens to you, right? The Orisa just fortifies, and then you're stuck in the enemy team, and they stun you, and they kill you. Uh, and, you and you die horrifically, and then you get, like, a really cool badass thing on your eye. And so it's, like... It's very, very important to know where the charge is going to go, and always, like, stop it before the enemy team goes. And what you can do is, like, oh... You can even, like, fake charges, so if the enemy team is, like... You know, let's take Hanamura... All right, you got the gates of Hanamura. Like this is the back wall back here, and then you've got like the doorway here. Okay, and you like charge, and you can't really charge from here. I say you're stood here, the enemy team stood here, and you charge, and you just go to here and like stop on this wall. That's fine, and honestly, I would probably never pretty much charge out here. Um, but you can like fake them with it at least, and then just block and see if they like activate fortify or see if they do like any kind of reaction to it and figure shit out from there. There are instances where you can just like make a decision based on what you see, if you want to go in for it, if you don't, but in general, stop shorter than you think. Other hallmarks of about Reinhardt is like constantly fire striking on cooldown. It's not a good idea. Fire strike is an ability that is somewhat situational. Uh, you want to just use it like as the enemy team is coming around a corner, you fire strike and then you barrier up. You don't fire strike, and this is like the most common mistake, when you have like these situations where your team is stood here, 
their team is stood here and you're just staring at each other past barriers, you don't fire strike in these instances. It's too long, it takes far too long, it's far too predictable, Zarya's will block it, um, Genji's will deflect it, all that kind of stuff. You don't want to do it in instances where two teams are just staring at each other, because it's given the enemy team an opportunity to get a pick. It's given them an opportunity to do damage. You don't want to let them do that. So, yeah, it's, it's not a good idea. Fire strike, yeah, when they come around corners, uh generally a good time to catch them if they're like if they really are like funneled and they're just trying to like go through a very tight choke point a very very small doorway into somewhere just lobbing a fire strike down there can cause a lot of problems if you hit people it does tons of damage you get a ton of alt charge um if you're coming to the later stages of a fight and you don't have to worry too much about protecting people behind you then you can start fire striking to put pressure on their rind stuff like that but generally like the the big mistake I see people making is when they are playing in like these defensive positions and they're behind their barrier and their entire team's behind them, all happy, and then you go for a fire strike and a Hanzo arrow comes through and kills someone because it's like a full second of animation. It's very, very bad. It's very, very difficult. Like how the blood is blue. Come on. Come on. Oh, he's leaking coolant, guys. You fucked up, Ryan. Uh, other than that, all mocks of a bad Ryan. Uh, not letting your barrier recharge. Don't be afraid to take a couple of seconds as well. Um, make sure your team knows, like, this is why communication is super important on the main tank role. Drop your barrier, stand around a corner, hey guys, I need to recharge. Um, and if they don't respect that, you just go, well, I told you, like, I'm recharging. That's fine. Dropping barrier on enemy as a sniper, that all plays into, like, the fire strikes and stuff like that. Um, yeah, there's no good reason to do so. Like, I mentioned this earlier, but it's like the barrier flicking to block damage. It's blocking non-lethal damage. If they have Hanzo, if they have Widow, you keep your barrier up. Because I guarantee you, and as like someone who occasionally gets to play Widow, one technique you can use as Widow is when they have the a barrier, you just aim past the barrier and you wait for the Reinhardt to fuck up. And you wait for him to like drop the barrier to fire strike or something and boom healer's dead because as someone who more often plays support what i'm generally doing is going oh i'm behind the barrier look at me oh i'm so small and cute that's me hi hello i'm relying on this and then when this goes away it's boosh and i'm dead so yeah it's bad it's very very bad bad ryan doesn't know where his honor healers are that's a very good point uh yeah this is true for like every main tank but it's no where your healers are what your healers are and where your healers are strong uh, so for a good example, especially when playing with an Ana, yeah, always play in line of sight of your Ana. The only time you leave the line of sight of your Ana is like for a split second and then you get back there, right? You just imagine always an invisible leash between you and Ana, and if you go around corners, it breaks it and you, you will die instantly. You don't do that. Uh, if you're playing with like a Moira and she's close behind you, then you have a little bit more leeway. Zen, maybe a little bit of leeway, but who plays with Zen these days? Um... But yeah, just keep in mind where your healers are strong as well. Like, if you end up playing with, like, Baptiste Ana and they're playing quite far back, just know that that puts you on, like, a very, very tight constraint of where you can actually go. Um, if the if a Baptiste is close to you, then you actually have a, quite a lot of freedom. But if you're playing quite far back, yeah, then you have issues. It's just knowing the spacing. Uh, What's wrong with Zen? Hasn't played in a year. There's too many barriers, so his damage is completely ineffective and nullified. Uh, there's too there's too much Doomfist, so you just have no way of surviving Doomfist, basically. And you don't really need Transcendence anymore. So, yeah, his damage doesn't really come into it. Um, the amount of damage coming out of the enemy heroes is too high for his healing as well. His healing just doesn't keep up. So you have, like, a 30 heal per second orb, and you're fighting, in like, Reapers and Doomfists and McCrees occasionally. Bastions. It doesn't work. You need the... This is why Ana, Moira, Baptiste have all kind of come to the fore. They put out a ton more healing. Lucio is more about speed boost. Um, and control that way. I think Deathball and Devil Sniper is going to come back with a revenge. I'm really curious about the new patch. I'm going to finish this on the new patch. Um, the, the new patch... The thing I love about the new patch... Let me get the patch notes. Uh, Overwatch. Patch notes. 23rd October, I don't want those. I hate that there's no, like, just single website. Let's 
Retail, I don't give a shit, please. PTR. Blizz track. October 23rd. That is the patch. Yes, that is the patch. Thank you, Blizz track. So, the thing that I really like about this patch is these changes in particular, uh, the Orisa changes. I've seen some people like go, oh my god, the new Orisa is so powerful. Uh, and the Reinhardt changes. The the new Orisa change, oh my god, she's going to be a bigger problem than before. She's going to be played more than before. Oh my fucking god, it's going to be unstoppable. People are going to play Orisa all the time. The big thing, the, the absolute big thing with this patch is that it moves power. So the way I always think of heroes is like they have some power put into their Q and some power put into their shift and Welcome some power put into their E. Hey. Uh, thank you, Gohan. <laughs> Literally stop being a sub now. Good time for it as well. You know, and some power put into the left click and some power put into the right click and you sort of, you RPG it out and spend points on your Q and spend points on this. So like Sombra put all their points in Q and Arisa put all her points in her barrier. Rodog put all his points in his, his hook, basically, and his left click. What they've done is they've moved power out of the shield and then transferred it to Orisa herself. So Orisa herself is tankier, has more fortify, has better movement, armor is better, so she has more of this better buffed armor. But her barrier is now very temporary. 600 hit points is not a lot, as people have shown. It's four Roadhog hits. It's a couple of hands of arrows. It's really not that much. It will not take people long to kill 600, so it's much more temporary. But the Orisa herself is harder to kill, which means that it's more about like, oh, well, if my barrier's down, as Orisa, I can still fight. I can still do a lot of damage. I can still be an active part of this freaking game. I'm not just going to blow away like wet tissue paper the moment my barrier dies. And so you get this new thing, and the same with Reinhardt, where they move power out of his barrier, but moved it to his movement speed, moved it to his steadfastness, so he's harder to push out and harder to push away. It's more about, oh, well, as Reinhardt, I can get in easier, and once I'm in, I can start causing a lot of problems, start doing a lot of cool things. Very, very, very nice. Very, very, very nice. It's it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And yeah, this this will do a lot to, to change up the game. The only thing that scares me is like they've really, really gone in hard on barriers, and so I'm really not sure how that's going to affect defense from now on. Um, just because like the the pacing of the game of Overwatch is very much built around almost playing like very defensively and very steadfastly, and then just like okay, you have to do something about us, and then sort of going from there. This makes defending a lot harder and offense a lot more powerful, but. I mean, that same is true for both sides. Ideally, the better teams should still win. It's just like the the issue I have, especially on like control and on um, assault, is like you generally only have to win a couple of times, especially on like assault. So, how's the balance of those maps going to go when your defense is just a lot weaker? Very curious to see how that plays out. But I still think it's going to be a better game overall. Like the Moira healing nerf is so long overdue. Uh, honestly, I think this can go down even further. This could probably go to like 50 hit points per second or something. And still be fine. The Widow change. I love the fact that people celebrated. Oh my god, Widow's finally been nerfed. Like, what games are you playing? Stai literally did a um, Pro of Analyzed today. I know it's console footage. I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to steal Stylus' content. Because uh, he mentioned this. Um, like, this, this game is just absurd. And so I went and had a look at it. And it's like a Widow player who is... like I'm just going to show the first couple of seconds of, of his content. I'm going to have it muted. And it's like... This Widow is literally doing this all fucking game long. And just like headshotting people non-freaking stop. This is on console and she's getting away and doing like this shit. Like... Just destroying people. And she still loses. Because, yeah. <laughs> because, because it's Overwatch. The tweet shows a lot, yeah. It's it's redonkulous. It's absolutely redonkulous. And that's that's Overwatch. That's Overwatch for you. It does tilt me. It tilts me when it's like, oh well nerf her. Because because she's clearly too good. I don't know. She's too skilled. Ugh, pisses me off. Uh right, we have two hours. I really don't want to play Overwatch. What do we do? 
what do we do? Do I just stop there and have some dinner and then come back tomorrow? Do I have another clip? I don't have another clip. People should send in clips. People should send in clips. Oh, I am reviews. At Gmail. Go. Go. Film your goddamn replays. New Star Wars game. I actually kind of want to get that. It seems to be reviewing well. I send a few Baptiste clips. Do not receive it. Uh, when was that sent? Is it this? October 27th? Hey, you did actually. Yep. It's a bit old, but should work. 